in October 1990, I was 14, almost 15 years old. Um, I was this tall. I weighed a cool buck 65, hair like Michael Landon. And, um, <laughs> and I was a mile from winning the Halloween fun run that was put on through my junior high school. And I'd never won uh, any sort of race ever. And um, when it started, <clears throat> I just started running. And I, as I often do, just am stuck in my own mind. And I'm thinking thoughts. And at a certain point, I kind of didn't notice anyone in front of me. I looked behind me, there's no one behind me. I'm straight up just destroying everyone. And so my brain starts spiraling into what this is gonna mean for me socially. My status is, because that at this point where I, where I lived probably everywhere, this was everything. Um, how you did, what you did, what, you know. And so I'm thinking, this is just amazing. And I, it just keeps pushing me, pushing me. And I'm about a mile away and I'm near the, the Twalton Hills Park and Recreation Center. And it's this just big complex of a couple big buildings with pools and, and, and courts and then outdoor baseball fields and soccer fields. And this path that cuts through it beautiful manicured grass going down to these ditches, these long, tall bushes, and I start getting a side ache, I think, but I don't really notice it. I'm, I'm so fast right now. I am so fast. The beautiful blue shorts that are short shorts, and I'm running. It's 1990, and I'm feeling good. The hair, and, and the, the pain in my stomach starts to move, and it's a different kind of pain. It's the pain that says I'm going to... I'm gonna shit, and I'm gonna I'm gonna shit now. And I, um, and I, and I don't know what to do because I'm not quite 15 yet. I feel like I was 15. I know what to do. So I, and it's going to happen. And so I, I just jump off the path and I go down the hill a little bit. And I remember I slipped a little bit. It was wet. And I darted behind the bushes and I went down where I knew I couldn't be seen. And I <laughs> pulled down my shorts, and I, and I started going. And then I started becoming panicking because of this incline. I was like crab walking, trying to go, so I didn't want it to flow down into my, my, my beautiful Air Max sneakers, which you can't disturb that. So I, and I'm shitting a lot, and it's upsetting. And I start to see, finally, after a while, the, everyone starts catching up and they're just running up and I can see them through the bushes just and I'm like well there goes that and um, and I, I was really ahead of them I was really winning um, and they they keep kind of going and I just have to stay there and I have to be really still and the pants are on my ankles and I'm nervous uh, and then when most of the pack goes I think well I have to try to clean up and I, I well the grass is wet so I try like sliding on the grass a little bit <laughs> and that and then I can see that my underwear, the underwear and shorts are gone at this, they're damaged. But the front of the underwear is fine, so I take that, I clean up. And so I'm like, well, these aren't coming with me, so like, my first instinct was to bury them, but I didn't want to, I didn't want to dig. So I just sort of hushed them under the thing and put some, uh, uh, they're still there, uh, probably. <laughs> but I'm, but I'm, but I'm trapped. And I've got these sort of, azure blue short shorts that are <laughs> destroyed. And, I, and I'm stuck and I really, my brain doesn't know what to do and I've, um, it was the first time I remember being so scared, um, like I'm probably irrationally scared. And I just realized I have to wait till everyone goes and the last few stragglers pass by and I make my way down to the edge of the, the little bushes there and uh, I start to come around and coming around in a motorized wheelchair is John, and John is, was the kid in my school in the motorized wheelchair, and I never talked to him. John was always had his headphones in, always singing along to something, always happy, saying hi to everybody. Not a lot of people said hi back. And he stopped, and he, I tried to hide, and he's, he yelled my name. I never heard him say my name, and I said, yeah. And he said, are you hurt? And I said, no. He said, did you have an accident? And I said, yes. <laughs> and he said, which one? <laughs> and I stood up, and, and I didn't say anything. And he said, um, um, here's my sweatshirt. And he took off his sweatshirt. And I walked up, and, and he gave me a sweatshirt. And I tied it around my waist. And um, we, we, I walked with him back to school. And he talked the whole time. He talked about 
<laughs> Rush. He loved Rush. <laughs> a lot about Rush. <laughs> How uh, next time Rush came back, his, his mom was going to take him to see Rush, and he couldn't wait. And what did I think of Rush? And did I know this Rush song? And I, and I didn't. And he's, oh, you got to. And um, he totally, it, it was relaxed. He relaxed me. And, and we walked back, and we got near the gym, and everyone is inside having a good time. And uh, Coach Boyer is standing outside, and he's like, where have you two been? And, and he said, oh, I had a problem with my wheelchair, and, and Jason helped me out. And uh, uh, Coach put his hand on my shoulder and said, uh, you know, you're a good kid. And I went in, took a shower. No one, no one knew. And, and, and I, wish, I wish that, like, the next day at school, uh, the rest of the year, that when I saw John in the hall, I'd say hi to him, but, but I didn't because my fucking stupid brain was still worrying about the wrong things. And I thought about it all the time, and I still do, it, him doing that. And I, and I thought, what, a, what an amazing thing he did for me. What a huge act of kindness. And I, and I realized that for him, it was just an everyday thing. He probably did. I think it was, he was just that kind of person. And uh, so in the you know, 25 years since, I've been trying to work really hard uh, to be someone who's worthy of that kind of kindness. Thanks. <laughs>